mentioned that it, it would be really hard to live up to the early NA stuff. Well, it's not I, out of the question that we could do it. I mean, we could definitely play it probably even harder than we did back in the day. Um, it's just kind of, you know, I don't know. It just it just got to be good. I mean, we've come up with you know some stuff, but uh, just you know we keep flip flopping. As soon as as soon as we want to concentrate on one tour, we're on another tour yeah. with you know either band. So uh, we really need to kind of take some time off and just concentrate on writing, which we'll probably do after this tour. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just did a big tour in the states with uh, Easy Action with Dinosaur Junior, and right after that we followed uh you know big negative approach tour so we're kind of constantly touring yeah. i mean it, it comes to, it's coming to a point we just don't want to turn anything down because we actually like think. traveling yeah. and playing well, you, you so. get to see the world and you get to play and have people which is enjoy perfect music. for us yeah. and it you know beats going back to our crap jobs at home so absolutely you know, you know. absolutely um when it goes back to the hardcore in the early days yeah yeah what would you say your favorite moment has been in in music and in with hardcore both just kind of just the creativity just kind of like you know you know it was so fresh then and it's like i said all the bands were different but they all kind of had a same vibe yeah. and it, you know the shows might have been 50 kids yeah. and it just uh it just seemed like a golden era for that you know that type of music uh it was just exciting we were kids and we're like, everybody was doing things. They had magazines, record labels, you know, whatnot. It, it was just a real creative point. Is uh, just a real golden era for the, you know, you, you know, the style of music. I can't believe you know it's evolved to this size these days. Which is like I said, like we played shows with Minor Threat. There'd be 50 people there, exactly. but the 50 people that were there were totally into it. Yeah. It was for the masses. You know, it was for the internet and MTV and all that. You know, you know, it just it, the people that wanted to be there wanted to be there, so it kind of made it special. You know, exactly. you know, exactly. Because I've thought about that a lot. That back in the day, we traded tapes. I yeah. had a radio show on a college radio station, WCSB. It was all cassettes. Um, and it was all that. letters on the back of a fly. Exactly. It, and it now, like, yeah. all the kids have to do, or any of it's us, all laid out for them. I mean, you know, <clears throat> you know, the internet, MTV, just. You know, you know, uh, uh, what's that store called? Hot Topics. Oh gosh! You can just yeah. walk in there, and they'll dress you up like a punk man. Absolutely. So, you know, you know, I mean, everything's laid out for the kids. So you know, you know, it's kind of funny. We walk into the club, and people, you know, we just, you know, we, just, I dress the same way I have since I've been fifteen, and they're like, it's so funny. We'll get this. You guys don't look punk rock, and I, you know, I don't want to pull the, the card. Uh, you know, well, you know, um, just everything, you know. It's so effective. It's so laid out for the kids. I think I think the most radical thing, you know, to do is not look like a punk. And, and I have this wonderful concept, be yourself, which I've been kind of trying to spread the word on that for, like, years. Well, that I mean, is what punk know, is about to me. Well, least. just, you know, I thought punk rock, no rules, anarchy, man. <laughs> and now everything's laid out and put into categories. It's not even punk rock. First of all, it's not even about music right now. It's about are you vegan? Are you straight edge? Are are you feminist? Well, you know, just whatever faction it is. You know, when I started as a kid, you know, started listening to punk records. It, you know, nobody was asking me what I ate. Yeah. You know, it's like, dude, don't judge me on that. Judge me on the performance of the band, and and if you like it or not, don't judge me on my lifestyle. I mean, I just you know. I've always been against, you know, the rules. Yeah. And that's what I thought punk rock was. Exactly. No rules. Yeah. Make yeah. your own rules. Well, just do your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so a message to the kids, if I can, you know, uh, just be yourself, man. Take it from there. See what happens, man. It might be cool. You know, you know. I mean, that's, you know, all our lyrics are about, you know, like, you know, peer pressure, fighting. Mm-hmm. You know, against people that were telling you you can't do things. Yeah. And now I, did, well, I wrote a song, Can't Tell No One What to Do. I don't want anybody telling me what to do yeah. or how to act, what to eat, what to wear, yeah. or what, you know, what to play. Well, you, know, you should like how uh, you should be. You should like how you are mm-hmm. and do your own thing, man. Yeah. 
The kids are uptight. Hardcore has no sense of humor anymore. That, that is very true. I've back noticed in the that. day, we you know, you know, we get all serious when we play, but you know, we all have senses of humor, man. We you know, yeah. we had good times. We could laugh about things. Oh, now it's like, watch what you say, because I'll defriend you, man. <laughs> kids, get off face page, man. It's a full time job. You got better things to do with your life. Well, just I mean, figure it out for yourselves. All right, all right. <laughs> online you really don't have an online presence from what i understand uh i've got an instagram and a twitter but uh i just try to put up funny stuff yeah you know you know you know facebook's that's a full-time job man oh, yes. i'm not i'm not worried about that yeah. i mean we'll put up photos of the band and if i think of something funny that i think's funny i'll, I'll put up a quote of the day maybe but uh, beyond that it's too time consuming. I don't, I don't, it's a full time job. It definitely is, without a doubt. And on that note, I would like to thank you very much for taking the time to oh, speak with us. It's, it's you get me all angry, man, for the show. <laughs> this is a good thing, man. I was gonna say, it just brings it out, let you go on. Um, oh. it's, it's some I have wanted to see you guys since I was a kid back in Cleveland. And we right played Cleveland once. We played three songs. They always call it the Negative Approach Riot. I remember we played some. Uh, God, it was like a VFW hall. Okay. We played Cleveland once. We played three songs, and then the cops came and shut down the gig. They grabbed the microphone out of my hand. Oh my god! So that went down in history as the Cleveland N- Negative Approach Riot. You know. I've, so, I've heard about it, but uh, it was one of those things of myth and legend. It was um, a very short gig. <laughs> it was a very yeah. short gig. And unfortunately, I missed it. So, oh, well. You know, it's only been a couple of years. So well, now I'm finally seeing you here in England. Well, that's the great thing about, you know, playing now. We're trying to make up for all the, you know, back in the day, we didn't really play a lot or tour. I mean, you know, the, the other guys were in high school and we had to sneak them out of the house to go play CBGBs or DC. So, um, we just like I said, we're having a good time playing. So it's like, you know, as long as we're having fun, we're going to keep doing this. And, we, you know, we hope people are getting off on it, you know? I think they definitely are. And a lot of people out there are really looking forward to seeing you guys. Cool, man. And us. We're Hello. really looking hey, forward. Hey, the old guys still want to rock, man. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> There's a few young ones out there, too. Well, that's the greatest thing about it. Our audience is like 14 to 50. So we got like 14-year-old girls with green hair singing ready to fight. I'm like, is this happening? <laughs> and then we got, you know, the old guy standing in the back go, yeah, man, I remember this stuff, man. You know, but uh, it, it's kind of timeless. I got to say, you know, just, uh, you know, the music was really good. And, you know, the lyrics, I still feel the same way today. So I'm not, you know, they were, they were just kind of universal, you know, kind of anthems about, you know, just do it for yourself be yourself don't be affected by people you know uh telling you can't do things you can do anything you want and so you know i have i have no problem you know i have the same hassles today on different levels that i did want to that that i did you know when i wrote all this stuff when i was a kid but it's you know they 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 still apply to today and you know the riffs were just good and 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 i i gotta say they 
you know, they stood up through time. They're always fun to play every night. We don't get sick of it. Yeah. You know, certain songs, you know, will kick into it. We'll just, you just want to explode. Mm. So, you know. That's kind of what I'm waiting for because some of my absolute favorite songs from teenage years come from you guys. Oh. So. I love it. I love it. Well, we're going to hopefully bring back some memories tonight. I hope so. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, I love it. I love it. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye, kids. Oh, yeah! <laughs>